I'm here in Tokyo. I just finished up an interview with Rod Javert. He is a controversial figure in the Bitcoin space. There is a lot of animosity between the Bitcoin cash and the Bitcoin caps, but I saved that for another video. This one is part of my What is Blockchain series. Here it is. I'm joined here by Rod Javert, who is the CEO of Bitcoin.com. Got into the space in 2011. It's great to have you here and to be chatting with you. Thank you so much. Let's dive straight into it. So what is blockchain? So you can just think of it as a worldwide ledger that's not on one single computer. It's on everybody's computer that's running a copy of that particular blockchain software. Uh, Bitcoin being the most well-known one around the world, but there's a bunch of them at this point. So instead of that, being, that ledger being on one company's computer with maybe one or two backups off-site somewhere. It's on thousands or tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of computers around the world. Everybody has a copy of that ledger. No single computer is in charge of that ledger and they all update their ledger in sync with everybody else's copy of the ledger. And because it's on everyone's computer, there's no way that anybody, any outside party can come in and, and interfere or inject, interject things into that ledger that aren't supposed to be there. So it's really, really exciting, powerful technology for for systems that can't be controlled or influenced by outside parties. How do you go from being a ledger to being a currency? Well, all currencies really are, are kind of ledgers that keep track of who has what. And so with currencies like gold, where you had physical coins or things like that, physical reality kept track of who had which coins where and who had possession of what. With Bitcoin, it's all digital, but there's a ledger that keeps track of who has how many Bitcoins. And just like physical reality limits the amount of gold in existence here on the earth, uh, mathematical laws limit the amount of bitcoins that are in existence on this ledger. And so then you can instantly transport them to or from anyone else anywhere in the world. That's incredibly useful as money. So when I first heard about bitcoin, I knew there wasn't any doubt in my mind. I knew that people were going to start using it as money. What gives bitcoin value? Just like anything else in the world, if it's useful and it's scarce, it, it has a value. So just like uh, bottles of water in the middle of the desert where there are people are worth more than bottles of water in a place where there's, you know, if you're in the middle of a swimming pool, it's not quite as, as useful. If you were to explain blockchain to a seven-year-old and Bitcoin to a seven-year-old, how would you describe it? So if I were going to explain blockchains and Bitcoins to a seven-year-old, I'd just tell them that it's money, but it's money that nobody can control or block or censor or manipulate, unlike traditional forms of money that the world has been using for, for quite a while now. How does the world manipulate money? So right now with normal forms of money like dollars or euros or yen here in Japan, there are central banks. They can print as many as they want at any time for any reason and then give that extra, you know, dollars, euros or yen that they've printed. They can give it to their friends and give it to businesses that are, you know, effective at political lobbying and spend it on all sorts of things that the rest of us might not want that money to be spent on. And if you or I were to go into our basement and print up a bunch of extra dollars, we would go to prison for counterfeiting because everybody realizes that counterfeiting is stealing value from all the other people that are using that same sort of money that's being counterfeited. Yet when governments do the exact same thing, they call it fancy things like quantitative easing or economic stimulus, but it's counterfeiting, plain and simple, and it's detrimental to the economy for the exact same reasons as if you or I were to go into counterfeit some money. Uh, with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, that can't happen. There's no central agency that can go and print as many you know, digital currencies as they want. And at the end of the day, people finally now have a choice as to which currency they're going to use. They can decide if they want to use the dollar, the euro, the yen, or a thousand and one different cryptocurrencies at this point. And, uh, Consumer choice is a good thing. It makes everybody better off. What role does government have in regulating cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin? Uh, why don't we just say what the question means directly? What role do violent strangers living in some far off city have in, in regulating cryptocurrency? And the answer is as much violence as they're willing to use to get that control. I wish it was none, but at the end of the day, they have a bunch of guns and people that are willing to follow their orders and, and threaten people that don't obey and lock them in cages if they don't obey. And there was just one father, I think in Minnesota, in the US, he got like a eight year sentence for selling Bitcoins on local what? Bitcoins to, to undercover government agents. Yeah, it's what, what did they? Why did they charge him with that? What was their reasoning? Uh, unlicensed money transmitting or something, which again is just, uh, you know, engaging in business without the permission of strangers who've never met you and should have no control over your life whatsoever. So. Uh, That's devastating. It's horrible, yeah. And I'm looking forward to using digital currencies to strip away the, the control of people like that. Uh, peaceful people shouldn't be controlled with threats of violence from people living in far off cities. And that's exactly what we have in the form of centralized governments and state actors today. It's, it's a bunch of strangers using violence against peaceful people, and that's not okay. And Bitcoin is the first step to getting us there. By taking uh, money away from politicians, you take power away from them. Yeah, I think the internet was probably the first step to give this worldwide communication 
network, and mm -hmm. now we have this worldwide uh, uh, payment network that we can use in the form of digital currencies. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more people around the world have more control over their own lives and, and violent strangers living in far-off cities working in buildings with flags out in front of them. I'm looking forward to those people having less control over the others. And what's the next step? Uh, the next step is getting more people to use digital currencies around the world and, uh, and start the central banks. And then the next step is, uh, is basically have people tell politicians, no, uh, I don't consent. How did the value of Bitcoin grow over time? It started out at zero. So how did it initially start to gain value in your opinion? So the first couple of people were just kind of playing with it as an interesting project. And then the very first transaction ever for money was somebody paid somebody else 10,000 Bitcoins that today would be worth somewhere in the ballpark of $100 million. Um, they paid them 10,000 Bitcoins for, for, for some pizza. And from there, it started to grow and grow and grow. One of the first major websites that really started to use it was a website called The Silk Road, in which people would use it to mainly buy and sell marijuana with each other because certain other politicians don't want people to be able to do that with traditional forms of money. Yet people started using Bitcoin for that. And that's how I heard about Bitcoin for the first time. And I wasn't interested in drugs myself, but when I heard that people were able to buy and sell drugs using some form of money, I thought, what kind of, what is this money about? <laughs> I knew it must be what really, really interesting magic? money. And, uh, and so I looked into it and I realized that it was the best form of money the world had ever seen up to that point. And so I, I got involved full time promoting Bitcoin since 2011. So it was money that gave people back freedom and control over their own finances. Yeah. And if you're like me who thinks that individuals should have control over their own money and they shouldn't have to get permission from some bureaucrats or politicians living in some far off city, cryptocurrencies are wonderful. It's uh, the, best, the best tool for human liberty that the world has ever seen. Why did you first get involved in the industry? So I started studying economics from a young age when I was in junior high. And the more economics I studied, the more of a libertarian I became. And I definitely didn't start out a libertarian, but the more economics I studied, the, the farther I went in that direction, because it's so clear that from a utilitarian perspective, not anything to do with the moral values, and I think the moral values intertwine very, very nicely, but strictly from a utilitarian perspective, if you want the most people in the world to have the highest standard of living with the most material wealth, the free market is the best way to do that. And if you look around the world, governments are constantly intervening in the free market and they're retarding the rate of economic growth of the entire planet, which is preventing people all around the world from having a high standard of living as they otherwise would have had if the government hadn't gotten involved in the economy. And then when I heard about Bitcoin and I realized that this is such an amazing tool to give people all over the world more access to economic freedom, which will then increase their own individual standard of living and the world standard of living as a whole, including my own. Of course, I'm going to promote this full time. Mm -hmm. It's the best tool we've ever had to propel all of humankind in the right direction. So, of course, I'm going to promote Bitcoin full time. And here I am uh, coming up on eight years later. I've been doing it full time every day, uh, nonstop, pretty much every waking moment. What is or will be the most important aspect of blockchain tech? Do you think it's going to be cryptocurrencies or do you think it's going to be something else? People always ask, what's the killer app for blockchains? But it's very clear the killer app for blockchains is money. The killer app for blockchains is Bitcoin. Look at how many users it's got and how many merchants it's got. Look at how many people are busy spending their time and money and effort and resources on the application of money. Uh, so the killer app for blockchain technology very clearly uh, was and is Bitcoin. And do you think that all of these other applications of blockchain tech, you know, it's being used in healthcare industries and travel industries, uh, do you think that that is also going to help make the world become a more free place? Sure, but if you look at these other technologies compared to money, everybody's using money everywhere all the time for everything. I think money is the killer app. And these other ones, good luck. Like, I'm, I'm excited about them. I hope they do good things. But uh, how often do I access my healthcare records? You know, maybe once or twice a year, hopefully, hopefully zero times a year if I'm lucky. I use money every single day. And so does everybody else. So uh, I'm the most bullish and most excited about the aspect of money being the killer app for blockchain technology to enable more economic freedom for people around the world. If you never got involved with Bitcoin and blockchain, what would you be doing now? Uh, before I got involved in Bitcoin, I was basically retired and I was uh, enjoying Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and life in Japan and competing in tournaments around the world and really having a, a great time doing that. Uh, I'd probably still be doing something similar to that. So everybody, uh, everybody in Bitcoin loves to talk about Lambo this or Lambo that, but uh, I used to have a Lambo before <laughs> Bitcoin was ever even invented and I sold my Lambo to buy more Bitcoin. That's how uh, in love I am with digital currencies. I so. am Lambo. <laughs> <laughs> and my Lambo is the same color as your jacket here. So. <laughs> nice, good, good Bitcoin color there. That's right. What hopes do you have for the future of cryptocurrency and Bitcoin? 
my hope for the future of digital currencies and, and Bitcoin is that it'll strip every single government on the planet's ability to control the money supply and strip away their ability to intervene in the economy and strip their ability to retard the rate of economic growth of the entire world. That's why I'm involved, is to bring more economic freedom to the entire world. And more economic freedom brings more economic growth. And more economic growth improves every single person on the planet's standard of living, rich and poor alike. That's why I'm involved. As a big proponent of Bitcoin Cash and uh, the CEO of Bitcoin.com, you've got a lot of passion. You put a lot of work into this industry. So thank you so much for chatting with me today. Thank you so much, Naomi. Subscribe to the channel. Yeah, subscribe to Naomi's YouTube channel. <laughs> Best endorsement ever.